Hello everyone, Nadalabs here. Today we're going to be making a very simple 3D game. So simple 3D game in Godot 4. Point, uh, what are we in? 4.2.2. Of course this works for um, any Godot 4 version. Most Godot 4 versions above this one. So let's get straight into it. And I'm going to be going like a really, really basic scene that will help you get on, get familiar with the 3D world. So over here we have our, if you just use the default uh, layout, so edit the layout and uh, default. So this is the default, pure default. You can see over here we have the 3D scene. I'm going to create a 3D node, node 3D, type uh, node 3D as well. I'm just going to name this the world, okay? So this is where everything will happen. I'm just going to put it into a source folder that I made up, okay? This is where all of our files are going to go, source. Then we're going to make a platform. So the way we do that is not through a 3D scene, although you could. It's better to use a static body 3D right here. Simple as that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a collision shape to it because we obviously want to collide and we're going to make this a cube and then we're going to go back over here and we're going to add a node and I didn't explain it earlier but the way I added a node was uh, through this plus sign or control a to add a node uh, so how do I add a node um, or what node am I going to add I'm going to add a mesh instance because I want to be able to see something mesh instance I'm going to add a is there a cube box box works and then I'm going to make it 10 meters by 10 meters pretty simple and I'm gonna zoom out a bit by just the scroll wheel. And if you ever like um, lose your mouse, that's probably because you right clicked and then you can move around. Um, if you ever like go over here and you wanna go back to the center instead of like repositioning like this, you can also click O to focus on the origin. Or if you want, um, if you have an object somewhere around and you wanna like focus on the object, you can click F to focus on the object and like go around the object. And the way you go around is by using the middle click. So if you, pre if you, if you have a mouse wheel, if you press into it and you can move around like this. Uh, you can just move around uh, the scene. It's kind of like a first person controller. Best way is uh, right click anywhere in this 3D viewport and then just uh, hover around. And if you click shift, you can go faster. And if you click, uh, if you click the left alt, you go a bit slower. Um, anyways, so we're gonna put this uh, platform back and we're going to make our collision shape a box too. So as you can see right there, I don't know how visible it is, but our collision shape is that blue box um, or that blue outline. So we're gonna make it 10 meters as well and 10 meters on the x and z axis if we made it 10 meters on the y axis then we would have a a giant cube but we don't want a giant cube we want a kind of a rectangular prism to walk on so we're going to name this platform platform save to the world scene and in our world scene we're going to instantiate that platform pretty simple uh, i'm going to focus back onto this i'm going to also add another platform over here uh, just a bit up and I'm going to add one over here to the side. As you can see, I'm just using basic controls to uh, navigate around. I'm grabbing this green one to navigate. I'm going to make this one a bit tilted like this, a bit down. Okay, that works perfectly fine. Control S to save. And now we're going to add a player in. So how do I add a player in? I add a character in by typing in character body 3D. I'm going to add a, you can add a sprite, but you want to add a mesh instance if you like that's better because 3D games have 3D objects. Although I'm not covering in how you can make fancy, cool, advanced graphics to make the next CSGO. I am just going to be putting a box that can jump around. I'm going to add a collision shape. Again, I'm just using this plus sign over here. And over here, I am going to add a box. And I'm going to name this by double clicking. I'm going to name it player. Player. Uh, I'm going to put this in its own folder just for organization shape, uh, organization sake. Player. Cool, cool. I'm going to add a script to the player. And if you see, if I if I leave it as is, you'll see that it has a template clicked on. And this template, if you read it word for word, character body 3D basic movement, it literally means that you will be have you'll have the basic um, first person shooter, third person shooter, basic movement. And there we go. We have no clue what this means, maybe, but all we know is that right now we have a proper functioning game. So I'm gonna go over here to the 3D scene and I'm gonna click world and I'm gonna instantiate player. Uh, so at the moment, the player is like inside the box. So we're going to grab the player and move them up a bit. We're going to move them up a bit. And then we're going to click F5 to run the scene. So when I run this, it's taking a second. And um, it turns out nothing is showing up. Why? Because there's no camera. So I'm going to put a camera in. Camera. Camera 3D. That's all you need. And I want to move this camera over here and up. Okay. Pretty simple. And now you can see that it is a... Well, I can move around. You can see that I'm moving around. And I can click space bar. Although I cannot have multiple jumps. And um, yeah, that's definitely not what we're seeing here. That's because by default in Godot 4, for some reason they have toggle preview environment. I don't really like that. And they also have toggle preview sunlight. If you want to add a sunlight, all you have to do is click your world, click the plus sign and type in light. 
There's a lot of few, there's a few lights you can choose, but almost always you're going to do directional light. If you want to have some sort of like glowing sun effect, uh, like this, so as you can see, and now we have this toggle sunlight disabled because we have a sunlight that we already use. And you might be saying, hmm, that's cool, but where are the shadows? Well, you have to enable the shadows. There we go, we have shadows. And now if we move this around, um, it's not going to do anything because it's based off uh, the rotation. So you can see that we have kind of a day-night cycle going. But that's not how day-night cycles are done. Anyways, as you can see, we have our basic setup. And now if we click F5 to run, we can see... Okay, we have our cube and we can jump, but it's we have no reason or clue of why our character is jumping. So let's just get rid of all of this and ask ourselves, what do we want to do when we have like a 3D platformer? Well, it's the same thing as a 2D platformer. Well, we'll have a constant variable called speed. Um, this can be whatever you want. And this is called static typing in Godot, where you have this colon here. And you can set the variable or the type of this uh, variable. The type here is float. How do I know it's float? Well, if I control click, I can say the built-in class called float, which is floating point numbers, which means anything with a decimal. The other one that you might want to know if you're new to programming or 3D stuff or Godot in general is integer, which just means a solid number without decimals. There's a reason it's divided in computer science. I'm not here to explain that. I'm here to show you how to make games. So next we have our speed and we're going to go into our function physics process delta. So physics process here is every frame of the game is 60 FPS wise. And delta is our um, time frame. Not important, but it, it's fine to have it there. What are we gonna say? Well, we wanna obviously apply gravity. So we're gonna go back up and make a constant called gravity, gravity. And we're going to give it, I don't know, like let's have it 10 meters per second downwards. We're going to also need a direction. So our the direction our player is moving in is going to be determined by, um, let's see. Well, we could call it velocity, var velocity. And we're going to just name it or we're going to make it so that we have, um, you know, it's a vector 3.0. Our velocity will be a vector 3.0. Why? Because this player, as you can see in the transform, moves in a vector 3 fashion or it has a vector 3 as position. And obviously, if our position is somewhere here, on the, let's say we're in a 3D world and our position is somewhere here. To get over here as a 3D cube, we have to move along a few axes. Um, and that would have to be across the X, Y, and Z axes. And obviously we would need a vector three for that. Now, um, let me see how, or let's think, uh, we need gravity. So if the is on floor, so if we are on the floor, if we are not on the floor, that's what this explanation mark means. It's the same as doing if not on floor, but we obviously want our velocity dot Y. Cause if we go back to our 3d scene, we can see if I grab this green, uh, arrow, um, I'm moving the box or a player up and down, the Y vari variable or value changes. And that's important because we want our velocity to apply to the Y variable or the Y axis of our vector three. If you're not on the floor, apply gravity. Else, we're just gonna set our velocity that Y equal to zero. And then we have to move and slide because that is an important part of this character body 3D class. It's just a built-in thing that you have to know. There's no way to work that out from first principle. And also we have to set our velocity equal to VEL. Um, because this is our built-in velocity, but this is the velocity of the character body that's built in and Godot handles all the movement for us. And we can see it went upwards, so we have to make gravity negative. Um, as you can see, it falls down immediately, but if we go back to our world and we grab our player and move the player, if we move the player all the way up around the scene, you'll see that the player will go smack down onto the ground. Pretty cool. Not bad, not bad. Next, we want to move around. How do we move around? Well, we can go to project settings, project settings, input map. Input map is where we can access all the um, keyboard presses. So if I want to do jump and left, right, forward, backward, I hope I spelled everything right. If, and I'm going to define these. So obviously jump in most games is plus and then you press space to jump, right? So obviously that's how we're going to jump just by pressing uh, space. And the way I set it up is I click this plus sign and now it's asking for a keyboard input. If I type in anything, it's going to accept that as the keyboard input. So I'm going to click left because that's what we want. Don't worry about physical or Unicode. That doesn't matter at the moment if you're a beginner. But then we just want to do right as well. Uh, D as right, a forward is W and then backwards is S. Okay, so obviously we want to get our inputs, but how do we get our inputs applied properly? Well, we have to make our velocity called player input and we're going to set it equal to a function called get player input inputs. So we're going to go down, make a function. So this is how you make a function in Godot. You just name it whatever you want. And we're going to make it return a vector three. This is important because we want to set what this function has to 
equal something. And what's going to, what is it going to equal? It's going to equal a vector three. How are we going to make it equal a vector three? Well, we're going to make a very random variable here and set it equal to the type vector three. And then we're going to say, we're going to say, and this is something you can't really figure out without reading the documentation, but we're going to say r dot x is equal to input dot get action strength, uh, right, oops, right minus input dot get action strength left. So let me zoom out a bit. What does this mean? This literally means that um, this variable r dot x, so a component of this vector three, a component of this vector three, which is initialized to vector three dot zero, is going to be um, a component, the x component is going to be equal to input dot get action strength right minus left. That means right minus left. That means that means if we press the right key, we get one. And if we don't press the left key, we get zero. So one minus zero is one. And then the r dot x will be one. And that means we'll be moving in the right direction. We'll be moving right because we're only pressing right. If, if, if we don't do anything, or if we press left, then it's going to be zero minus negative one or zero minus one. And that means moving left. Same idea for r dot z equals input dot get action strength forward minus, uh, I'm just going to copy this and then backward return r cool and now what we have to do is we have to set our velocity we have to set our velocity dot x equal to player input dot x uh, we could also put a colon here to get um, typing in so velocity dot y or z is equal to player input dot and you can see that if we uh, scroll down we have the three components of our vector three we're going to make it equal to velocity dot z and now we're going to run and we're going to see that um if I press W, yeah. Oh, if I press W right now, it's moving towards me. That's not correct. So I'm going to just flip uh, backwards and forwards. So forwards, backwards, flip like this. Uh, there we go. And now we can move around and uh, we don't seem to jump. Oh, yes, we haven't program jumped. How do we program jump? Well, we have to do it after this block of code. So just a few lines down. If we, if input dot is action um, just press, if you just press jump, then I want you to set velocity.y equal to jump. Oh, we don't have a variable for that, but it's okay. Uh, jump strength. Um, and we can just make a constant up here. It doesn't matter if you make a constant variable. It's just best practices to make constants if you're not changing the variable during runtime. So if I press space, uh, we jump and we can do multi, multi jumps if I spam it, but, um, it's a bit off. Yeah, because it looks weird. So if we just reduce the gravity, then our jump strength, it, it looks a bit better. And obviously you have to play around with the variables and whatnot. So maybe making this a four uh, will be better. And over there, you can see I opened up a gray screen. That's because I clicked F6 instead of F5. Um, you can also run the project from here. And you can see that we jump and we can walk around slowly, but that's because we're not multiplying by speed. And if we get our player inputs and multiply that by speed, what does that do? Well, that takes our vector which is our direction, like let's say we're moving in this direction, multiplied by speed, that makes our new um, direction or player input multiplied by that speed variable and that makes it a lot bigger, which means when we set our velocity to player inputs, that means we will be moving at this speed as opposed to this speed. So if I click F5 to run, you can see that I can now walk around and hop to the other platform, but the camera doesn't follow me. That's not a problem. If we go to the world, then if we click F, uh, if we click 3D up here, or if you want, I believe it's control F2, or if you want, um, I've remapped mine to F1, F2, F3 for script. Um, I did that through editor settings and I made uh, the shortcut uh, 2D, 2D view, or is it open 2D editor, uh, control F1 or F1 physical, the like the button on your Windows keyboard. And if you want the camera to follow the player, all you have to do is drag the camera underneath the player. So this means the player is the parent and camera is the child. That's just very, very fancy speak for saying that. Um, let me just move these back to where they were supposed to be. That's fancy speak for saying that if whatever happens to this player happens to the camera. So you can see that the camera is following the player without me doing anything. Of course, if I made the camera a child of the world, then if I move the player, then the camera doesn't follow me. So if I click five to run again, you can see that we can walk around and we have basically Crash Bandicoot um, version, you know, five or Mario Super Mario World. I don't really remember. I haven't played it, but you, you have a basic 3D platformer setup. In how long is this? Uh, in less than 15 minutes um, with editing. 
and I will be posting all of this on GitHub. And if anything is unclear or unsure, let me know. But this is how you can get started and running with Godot pretty quickly. Have an amazing day. And you like, ooh, oh. Why did I, okay, whatever. Um, move them up a bit, or her, you never know.